G'day viewers, my name is Michael and welcome to Single Racer. And in today's tutorial slash discussion piece, I want to talk about a subject that happened to a good friend of the channel in an online server race that I was also participating in. And that's because you could argue that car position, as in where you are on the track, and car angle are arguably one and the same thing. But uh, I want to put on my high school debating team hat just for a second and argue for the negative and say, no, I don't personally think so. I think, or a better way to put it maybe is, I think car position and car positioning are two different things. And that's what I want to argue in this tutorial. But just before we get into the tutorial proper, let me just set this up because of what happened to a good sim racing friend of mine, Simon Olsen, in a server race called the Sunday Sub Showdown. And it's held by a channel called The Extra Mile. And he was getting a bit frustrated. Now, I didn't particularly do that well in the race either, but he finished near the end, but his frustration wasn't about where he finished. He was happy with uh, his effort, but it was the fact that he couldn't understand with his ability that he felt he was coming into the corners really well, hitting the apex perfect for his ability, and then, but more importantly also, coming out of the corner really, really well. And then this alien would fly by, both in the same car, so they both got their foot flat to the floor, and he was trying to understand from that learning point of view where was the alien getting that extra speed if they're both in the same car with the same power and they've both got their foot to the floor? But just before we park the car and get into the tutorial, let's keep in mind that an alien just has a gift. I mean, if I think of the three major ones in motorsport still, uh, one being, of course, the previous champion, Michael Schumacher, the current champion, uh, Lewis Hamilton and my personal favourite Valentino Rossi. They just have a gift and they have a gift over and above a whole field of uh, contemporaries that have that skill but they just rise above. There's just something about that. So the key is that <laughs> I'm definitely no alien but what I want to talk about is what helped me make me particularly faster and so Please keep in mind that it's important that you understand that uh, an alien might scoff at what I say and if I ever get to that higher level, I might drop half the things that I talk about. But I just want to talk about the things that helped me get a little bit faster and maybe you can take it in, take other bits of information from other drivers in and work out for yourself the best way to slowly improve your own ability. So let's park the car now, let's put it aside and get into the tutorial and we'll, uh, or I'll explain that I personally felt helped me become faster over time. Okay folks, so here we are out on track and the way I want to do this is I want to show you four specific corners. Two are on the Nordschleife, one on Bathurst, and one on a track that I'd only ever driven once before, but I haven't gone back to since then. And if you look at the top left, uh, you'll see my official RSR time, and that's what I mean. It's, you know, it's okay, 50 second spot, but I'm definitely no alien. But the key here is that I want to approach it from that non-alien point of view, that this, uh, these are the things that uh, helped me or slowly unlocked, especially as I got to learn the Nordschleife. And so um, the important bit is that I want to show you from three levels. You know, your typical raw beginner, your intermediate or slightly above an intermediate where you're competent but maybe missing those couple of bits uh, to just make you a little bit faster and then from that, uh, you know, slightly more advanced point of view where I feel that I, it's helped me, especially on the Nordschleife, become a lot faster. So I slowly learnt it and unlocked these particular tips that I want to show. So let's jump ahead now and get to these couple of corners. 
Okay, folks, so I mentioned that I wanted to show the three levels, but just for uh, the sake of keeping the tutorial shorter, we'll wipe out the raw beginner, because if you've ever raced online, I'm sure you've seen it, you know, they come in way too hot, you know, hit the brakes, come in and lose it, and, you know, spin off your typical beginner who overdrives and, uh, you know, <laughs> just ruins their lap. So we'll ignore the beginner and we'll go from the intermediate driver. Okay, so the reason that I mentioned my RSR time is, I don't know if you've seen this app before, most people are familiar with it, but it's called Sidekick. And it can show, in this little box here, it can show you four uh, parameters. One is the distance to the car in front, the other is the to the car behind if you're racing, but also your best and then your personal best. And your personal best is the time taken from RSR. Your best is just for that session that you're doing right at this point in time. But your personal best will always be whatever time you have set, assuming you've set one. And so that's important in the demo that I realized that I actually would like to show three corners because they all flow in sequence. So it will help you get a better understanding of just sort of what I'm trying to get across as far as car angle or car positioning as opposed to just car position. So as I go, you'll see my time in the little box, it takes a little while, there it is. And so let's now be the intermediate driver where I'm driving in the correct position or what I feel is the correct position. To do a hot lap. Now here it doesn't matter really if you're left or right, but you know you brake hard, turning and then attack this corner. So that's the second corner I want to show you. And we're coming up to the third one. So as the instructors say on the Nordschleife, a break, break, and then turn. All right, and that's it. So that's your intermediate time where you've, um, you know, you feel you're setting a good time and you're positioning the car in a position that you feel is uh, the correct way to approach the corner. But now let's do it again a bit slower and I'll talk about um, how just those slight variations or tips have made me faster through that whole section. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to show what I feel is the difference between uh, car position and car angle and there's really no way around it you it all probably comes down to track knowledge there's so much of this that is under the umbrella of track knowledge that you can't get around it you you just really got to learn the track to maximize uh your speed but just to at least show you for the demo so here's me coming flying down on a typical online server on the nordschleifer the difference is, rather than just being to the left and being straight, or I'll go up a bit further and then I'll back it up. So here, so I know I've got to turn right, I go over here to the left, and then, you know, I try and hit the apex turning right. But the difference is that because of the track knowledge of doing hundreds and hundreds of laps on the server, is now what I do is I actually come flying down and I almost try and hit, there's the end of this barrier right here and I try and almost hit it with my left wheel but just miss. Now you don't get a penalty that, for this but what I'm saying is you come right over here, now I'm over exaggerating a little bit, but now I angle the car to, to almost open up that curb or the right corner as much as possible so that now I'm straight lining it and uh, plus balancing the car a bit more rather than being here and then trying to savagely turn in. And you know, you see so many people, they just go over and over and over and then they just can't hang on to it and go up the, the curbing. 
And so that is just that slight angle that helps you become faster. And I'll show you at full speed, but let's go to the second corner because this is the corner that I talk about um, or that gave me the idea with my good sim racing friend, Simon Olsen, was because you could argue you could be in this position or slightly over to the right, but what so many people do who are intermediate drivers is, you know, they come down here, right? They brake hard, turn, but the natural way the car can only go is over here. You know, as they bring the car to a halt, they, I'm just, I just need to spin the car in just to show you, but they can only really go in one way and that's drift over to the right there as they take the corner. But what I do is radical. Now I do have to stress that um, aliens might scoff at this and you know if you've got that alien skill you probably don't even need to do this. I think aliens would go ahead and if I was an alien I would probably go straight. But my argument comes from the fact that uh, I've raced so many times online that if I have a car with me the whole way down and we're equal all the way down to this point, uh, I actually leave them behind by doing this technique. And because my argument is that by being straight and then braking here, you have to brake so hard for the corner. But I come out wide, but what I lose coming out wide here to a person going straight, I feel I make up because now what I do is I turn in and it's not about just this corner and not even about the second corner after this but the whole way down the hill and the speed you can carry all the way down the hill. So by using the, this technique which I'll show you in fast speed I come flying down here with so much more speed that I slowly pull away from the guy even though he might have gone straight but had to turn more severely into that corner. So now let's go to the third one which is extremely subtle. And so the teachers on the real Nordsch life, as in real life, will say you break here and then turn and then break here. But see, here's the natural tendency that you think as an in intermediate driver, well, this is good position, you know, I want to be in this position so that I can turn right, so I can be as far left and turn right. But what I realized was it's that same subtle thing of what's coming after the corner, like what's next from that corner. So what I'll do is because I've done it so many times, you know, that's the key, the track knowledge, is I'll come flying down here, I'll hit the brake, but now I'll turn in, but I won't aim towards that first red uh, on the fence there. I'll aim here to try and straighten that and it's so subtle so as I'm braking for the second time here I'm now at this angle rather than this angle and it's just that slight difference that allows you to carry more speed because I've got more room to drift over and not hit the fence and I run out here usually if I do it really really well and that's what allows me to carry that one to three kilometers maybe of more speed by straightening that particular corner as subtle as it is between the two different angles of how your car is shaped coming into the corner. Um, but now let's go at full speed and I'll try and break it down for you and show you what I mean. Okay folks, so now let's do the hot lap in earnest to show you hopefully the flow of the three corners together but more importantly probably the angle of the car that uh, I feel gives me a faster time through those three corners as a whole. Now please keep in mind that I normally race in VR but I just wanted the higher quality that the monitor will give me for this tutorial. So you should see my time drop in uh, Sidekick, there it goes. 
but you should still see it go up if I take that second corner down the hill well. So down the fourth, down the third, out wide to get the flow of this corner that's much better through there, down the second for this tighter right hander. And now up to fourth, but I run her out wide immediately down the third to get the turn in there to get the speed coming out of that corner. There we go, and look at the arrow go up. Immediately goes up. If I take this well, hopefully, yep, hang on to it. There it goes, it's still going up. Now let's take this final corner well with the angle. There, there's the angle, turn in, and that's it. Now, I did slow it down a little bit just for that example, but let's have a quick look. Now, I won't do this for the other two corners that I want to cover, but just for these two, let's do it in slow motion just to show exactly what I'm talking about, uh, especially for Simon Olsen, um, the angle of the car for each corner. Okay, folks, so let me show you uh, a slow motion replay just for these three corners alone. I won't do the next two, but it just gives you a better sense of what I'm talking about, about not only the angle maybe, but the balance of the car as well. So as we come here, See, because it looks like counterintuitive to what I'm saying, because I'm veering to the left. But as I get to this widest part there, when I do turn in, see, it opens up this section here so much wider. And it not only allows me more room, but arguably to balance up the car. So uh, it looks like I'm doing it really slow because obviously I'm in slow motion, but you'll see with the wheel that as I come out of the corner, I can balance by unreleasing the wheel and it settles the car back to its flattest position, which opens up the corner and makes me faster through that corner. Now, if we speed up again, just to this next section, You'll see kind of the same thing and there's something that happens with the car where here. So I come in tighter. Now I did miss the apex a little bit with this example. But what it does is because I'm so far to the left as opposed to braking hard into the corner and then having to turn sharp left. See, I release the wheel and the car actually sits up flat and now I can get on the power so much earlier or at least a car length earlier, which gives me then all that speed that I showed you before down the hill. And that's what gains uh, me over people behind me where I start slowly pull away because of all the speed I can gain down the, down the hill as opposed to just that one corner. So now let's speed it up for the final corner, which is the best example of the subtle angle here and now so as I pause it here, so I'm coming in, but I'm facing towards this. Um, so if you think of this as two groups of trees here, this third solo tree. So I'm angling towards there as opposed to turning in and angling towards this first group of trees. And then I have to turn sharper right, which kills a lot of the speed. So as I come in, now I angle C straight and that gives me that uh, fuller corner angle and once you get used to it you carry more speed. Uh, I see it a lot in the F1 cars where you run over this extra bit of bitumen or side uh, bit of the road so you can carry that extra speed and you just get more and more used to it the better angle you put into coming into those three corners and it's that angle that kind of gains you the speed. So let me just quickly show you two more uh, corners that are a little bit different from these three. Okay folks, so the reason I picked these next two corners is I'm hoping it's an example to someone like Simon Olsen where it's not about just taking the corner well as far as the apex of that corner but what happens behind the corner what comes after the corner into the next uh, flowing parts of either the track or other corners so an example here and I'll, I'll over exaggerate it just to get the point across because I'm not going at the correct speed 
but someone might take this corner at Bathurst correctly where they're in the correct position but what they do is they turn in hit the apex but then they run it out wide see and so they get that corner perfect but they're not actually in a good position or the best position the best angle for the next this corner and the following corner and so they end up slowing their speed overall over a set of three or four corners because they only maybe focus on the one corner or how to take that one corner well so let's go back and maybe look at a slightly different way to take it um, that will help you okay folks so now the reason i picked this corner is because it's an odd uh, combination of what you might argue is a late apex but then understanding how much angle and speed you need to kill off to come in in a tighter angle so if we run it through slowly just so i can sort of more clearly explain what i mean so you're viewing over here to the right position but then it's understanding that i might break a little bit later but then i'll hold the brake or trail brake tighter into the corner but now instead of sweeping over to the right is i'll hold it hold it sorry all the way to here and now i'm aiming dead straight for the next corner in the sequence but what happens now is once i take that corner in a straight line i naturally am going to sweep over to the left side here to take the next corner in the correct angle and you know it's that combination of joining all the corners together that helps get your speed providing that the initial angle was correct in the first place so let's try it now at full speed Okay, folks, so here we come flying up the hill. We're going to go out to the right for the correct position, but then we're going to delay the turn in. Trail brake, and now hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, and now, see, we're on the perfect angle to almost keep the car dead straight, even through this section here, and this is what keeps the car balanced. But as I over-exaggerate, the sort of the sliding so like an example is if I come here too hot and I slide that's what kills your the speed as you're trying to like that keep control of the car so it's that balancing the car in as straight a line as possible due to the angle of the car being correct from that first corner all the way through those other three or four corners as a complete set okay folks so here we are on the last example and it's because this is a brand new track that i've only driven once it's called port newark for a set of corsa and um i was driving it to show off the updated version of the need for speed pack on race department so i was learning it solo so that i could race against all the other cars and i knew where i was going but the example that i want to give here briefly is there's a little really tight s bend at the end of this and um you can take it flat out so if i show you here so here if you've got the courage you're just there fly through it i nearly hit the wall there but that was the example of the first corner so as we progress now a little bit further down the track uh, another corner that looked exactly the same come, came up but let me show you what I had to do in regards to what I'm talking about about not just taking the corner and the shape of the car into the corner but what is actually behind the corner so let's uh, fast forward to that now okay folks so here we are on the second half of the track and what I tend to do on new tracks is kind of almost overdrive it and then back off and figure out what speed I can carry at each individual corner even if I wreck a few times and so as I drove up to this this looked like a mirror of that first corner that I showed you but of course what happened was I now I've got the map on to show you but I drove and flow through it and of course bang I just went straight into it because 
uh, you know, I didn't naturally know that it was such a tight bend. So now let's talk about what Simon Olsen is saying about why do I seem to take the corner um, reasonably well, but I've got these aliens who overtake me down the start finish line. And that's because the reason that I picked this corner deliberately was because to me it wraps this whole video up in a nice neat bow in the sense of when you think of uh, the fact that I was learning the track, I was put in all three positions that I talked about at the start of the video. So first I was the raw beginner where I didn't know where I was going, smack bang into the wall. Now I'm going to be sort of the intermediate driver that uh, goes, okay, I need to be on the right side but what happens now I'm on the right side but as I turn I'm not in a good angle so as I accelerate see I have to back off so this is what Simon was saying is that you carry a certain amount of speed but the alien goes past you all the way down the straight and he is going but we're in the same car how could this happen uh, so let's go back now just uh, back to where I was and explain that final bit about the angle of the car and so to wrap this up as a complete package is that it's my view that what uh, someone like Simon Olsen, and I'm not picking on him directly, but I'm just saying someone that feels they're struggling to understand how the aliens can be quicker, is because they drive into the corner and then they're in the correct position. What they think when they're hitting the apex is a perfect line or it feels perfect. But what could be happening is as they accelerate out of the corner, they're not quite at the right angle. They're in the right position, but not the right angle. So they maybe have to back off to make sure they complete the corner. Whereas uh, a more advanced person or an alien will understand what's happening, not just at the corner, but afterwards. So uh, as you can see by the, uh, the map there, there'll be this big long straight. So now we'll take it from the advanced point of view and I'll drive slowly just to get the point across but we come out wide so that's the correct position but now I know it's coming up I'll brake earlier turn in tight tight accelerate accelerate and now I'm carrying full speed all the way down the straight because I've got the correct angle in the first place to carry all that extra speed for the next corner but also what comes after the corner. And I just hope that sort of helps a little bit in understanding uh, to maybe take more time to learn a track as far as not only just the position, but what angle you should come in for the corner as well as what happens after the corner and any corners after that. So I hope that helps you. I hope it hasn't been too long winded. Uh, you know, I hope it just uh, sort of answers a few questions that some people might have. So this is Michael signing out for Single Racer. I'll catch you next time. See you later.